Good afternoon and welcome to Webinar Wednesday. Today we are joined by Lucio Simoni, Engineering Manager at BC Group. Webinar Wednesday would like to thank our sponsor, BC Group. BC Group International is a biomedical test equipment manufacturer and distributor for over 75 brands of products. BC Group's flagship brand is BC Biomedical. BC Group sells direct and through distributors, both domestically and internationally, and provides equipment to medical device manufacturers, independent service companies, hospital biomedical and clinical engineering departments. For more information, please visit bcgroupstore.com. We want you to be up to date on the latest news from the Tech Nation community. So in the handout section of your webinar dashboard, you'll find a few PDFs. Um, it includes the pre-show planner for MD Expo Houston, which starts next month from April 11th to the 13th. We have a pre-show planner for our HTM mixer in Baltimore this May 11th to 12th. Information on the call for presenters for October MD Expo in Orlando and details on our HTM Week contest and applications for the 2023 class of 40 under 40. So please have a quick look when you have a moment. Okay, today's webinar is eligible for one CE credit from the ACI um, and you can obtain your CE to certificate by completing the post webinar survey which will be emailed one hour after the completion of today's webinar you must complete the survey to receive your 1CE credit from the ACI and you'll be able to download the certificate directly from your computer once the survey is submitted if you have any questions you can reach us at webinar at mdpublishing.com let's kick off today's webinar by giving away one of our webinar Wednesday t-shirts to the attendee that can tell me the answer to the following trivia question BC Group, our sponsor today, is headquartered in Missouri, the birthplace of the author who wrote The Adventures of Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn. What is his name? Answer now using the questions feature on your dashboard and I'll reveal the answer at the end of the webinar. We'll be wrapping up today's presentation with a live Q&A, so please submit a question anytime using the questions feature on the webinar dashboard. As I mentioned earlier, our presenter today is Lucio Simoni, who will discuss manual testing, auto sequences, and remote operation of the SA2600 electrical safety analyzer using my BC mobile. So Lucio, you may begin whenever you're ready. All right, hi everybody. Thanks for joining us today. Um, again, my name is Lucio Simoni, so I'm the engineering manager here at uh, BC Group. So what we'd like to show you today is our, our latest safety analyzer, the SA2600. Um, we're gonna go over all the functions, how to use it, uh, how to get to all the features and measurement modes, how to do auto sequences, and even how to use MyBC Mobile uh, to automate your testing and use Bluetooth communications uh, to get all of your test results. So uh, we have a couple of videos we're going to show. Um, and what we'd like to demonstrate is that if you're familiar with our safety analyzer series, this product will be really easy to pick up and learn and be able to use just like all of our other safety analyzers. So sit tight and uh, enjoy the presentation. Thank you. Hi, my name is Lucio Simoni. I am the engineering manager for BC Group. In this video, we'll be demonstrating the SA2600 safety analyzer. We'll be showing three different segments, one with manual testing, another with automated testing, and then the third with remote testing using MyBC Mobile. This is the main screen that the SA2600 powers up to, showing all of the test features that are available. Now, I also have an SA2010 next to this one for this part of the test. I'm going to demonstrate this outlet status uh, indicator at the top here. So what this does, the old SA2000 series had the neon indicators that indicate whether or not the receptacle that we're plugged into is wired properly. So in this case, we can demonstrate a fault condition. If we have an open ground, uh, it will indicate on the screen there that we have an open ground. Or if we have a reverse polarity, we'll also get that indication on the screen of the SA2600 as well. And so we have fault detected, reverse polarity. We can say OK. 
and we could also have our open ground with reverse polarity as well. So all these statuses uh, indicate at the top of the screen and also we're, when we're in the mains voltage testing, that will also be seen shown at the top of the screen. Now in some cases we have uh, international or if we're using 230 volts uh, for our main supply, we'll actually have two hot leads and in that case we could get some false indicators uh, similar to the uh, old neon indicators on the SA2000. If that's the case, we may want to turn off the outlet status indicator so we don't get those nuisance messages. And in, now that, that warning has gone away. And now we can go on to the mains uh, and lines voltage measurement. By pressing that button on the main screen, we can see here that we can measure the line, incoming line voltage which is important to make sure that that's correct before we proceed with the rest of the testing. Okay, so now we've completed the outlet status indicator testing and the line voltage measurement. So I went ahead and removed the SA2010 from our test configuration just to clean up our test setup a little bit, declutter our workspace. Now we're going to move on to device current. So I can select device current from the main screen. In order to apply voltage to the device under test, we can see the status indicators on the front of the SA2600. It defaults to the hot being open. So I'm going to go ahead and close the hot. Uh, terminal on our test receptacle. Neutral is closed, ground is closed, and polarity is forward. So now I have a normal status condition for my test receptacle. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the device under test. And once it's powered up and stabilized, we can get a device current measurement. Now we might also want to measure this with various uh, fault conditions. So again, we can press any of the buttons on the front of the screen or front of the SA2600 and we can create, uh, say, an open ground or reverse polarity. When I press the open polarity, it's going to temporarily open the hot and neutral terminals on the receptacle. That's just to make sure that we don't damage the device under test by reversing the polarity of the power too quickly. When I do that, I'll have to go back in and turn on the device under test and we can monitor the current measurements uh, as it's running, as it's powering up, looking for a worst case condition. We can open the ground or uh, open the neutral and, and hot terminals to create single fault conditions while we're measuring the device current. The next function we'll be testing is earth resistance. From the main screen, I just press the earth resistance button and now I'm presented with the screen and measurements for earth resistance. So I need to remove the device under test and connect my ground pin adapter and that allows me to do a zero offset for the cable, for the internal circuitry on the safety analyzer and I can get a zero offset for that and now I can make sure that all of that portion of the measurement is removed when I do my earth resistance measurement. Now I take the chassis clip and I connect to the earth ground on the back of the device under test and now I can see the star above the ohms measurement that's indicating that we have a zero offset uh, being used and our measurement is 0 0.067 ohms. I can easily get rid of that zero offset by pressing zero leads again and now we can see the star goes away and that, that measures the total resistance including the internal circuitry. Now if we have any question about that measurement we can also test the measure the test snap on the side of the SA2600 and this provides a one ohm nominal measurement but it's important that we turn off the zero offset when we're testing when we're measuring the test snap so we need to make sure that that star is not present on the screen above the ohms symbol we can go back to the home screen by pressing the back arrow and we're ready for the next mode of testing the next mode we'll be testing is leakage mode. From the home screen, I can press the leakage mode button. That takes me into the main leakage mode testing screen. I'm gonna take the chassis cable and plug it to the earth ground on the device under test. I'm gonna create a normal condition for the device under test by closing the hot and neutral 
and setting the polarity to forward. Now in this mode, I can't close the ground because when we're measuring the earth ground leakage, we need to put our meter in series with the, the power cord to the device under test. So I can't actually close the ground uh, circuit. I can turn on the device under test and measure the worst case uh, ground leakage. And we can also create single fault conditions by opening the neutral or opening the hot terminal one at a time and find out the maximum leakage current for a single fault condition. We can also reverse polarity and get our maximum leakage current reading uh, with any single fault condition. Now I've returned it to a normal condition with hot and neutral closed and polarity forward. We can move on to our next leakage test mode by pressing the up arrow next to the leakage mode. And this is the enclosure leakage. This is represents the touch current or any leakage current flowing through the enclosure of our device under test. Now, if I don't have any ground lug or exposed metal on the device under test, the standard says I should use a metal foil and uh, attach that to, you know, uh, move it around the outside of the enclosure to find the maximum leakage point. But in this case, we do have a ground terminal on our device under test, so I can connect the chassis cable to that ground terminal and measure my leakage current through the enclosure. Again, we can create single fault conditions. Now, in this case, because we're not measuring the ground current in the test receptacle, we're measuring it through the chassis cable. We can open or close that ground terminal, and that simulates, again, a single fault condition to the device under test. And so we're looking for, uh, we would follow the service manual for our device that we're testing, looking for the worst case single fault condition current, and make sure that that's under the limit uh, for the device that we're testing. The next test mode is lead to earth, and that's going to test any patient leads to the earth ground on the receptacle. So we'll turn on the device under test, and again, we can create single fall conditions or normal conditions with the four buttons on the front of the unit. In this mode, we need to select which lead we're going to be testing. We can select each lead individually, or we can scroll through the available leads and test all of them at the same time. This is convenient for, we wanna test all of these leads and if there's any one that, you know, if we find a measurement that's over the limit, then we can go back and test each one and find out which one is at fault. So we can create single fault conditions, open ground, open neutral, open hot, uh, like we with these four buttons here, like we've done in the past. And we'll refer to the service manual to determine if these measurements are in or out of tolerance for based on the standard that we're testing. The next mode is a lead to lead. We can select that by pressing the up arrow on the mode. And in this test mode, we're going to test from one any one single lead to all of the others. And that rep, that's measuring the leakage current from one lead to the others to determine if that is safe or within the test limits. Again, we can create normal or fault conditions using the four buttons on the front of the unit. We can do reverse polarity, open hot, open neutral, and open ground as needed to try and find that worst case scenario. So we'll go back to a normal mode and uh, we'll go to the next test mode, which is lead isolation. In this test, we're going to apply line voltage plus uh, 10%, so 110% of line voltage will be applied to one of the leads, and we're measuring from that lead to all of the others. So we can select any one lead using the up and down arrow on the lead, and we can also do an external test uh, measuring from external to chassis, or we can do all of the leads. And again, we can test all of them at once, and we can get a measurement here of 13 microamps, or we can create, um, when we turn off the isolation voltage, we can create a single fault, 
and look for a maximum current. At that point, we would rely on our service manual to determine whether these measurements are within the appropriate limits as set by the device manufacturer. The next test mode is point to point. That allows me to measure a leakage current. If I have a device that is hardwired to a main supply, I can connect an external and a chassis cable and I can measure point to point leakage current uh, through those two terminals. But in this case, we have a, a uh, device with a power cord, so we don't need to use point to point measurement for this device. I can go back to the main screen by pressing the back arrow. And the next test that we'll be doing is ECG waveforms. This is a performance test. We can see on the screen of the device under test that it's showing us a normal sinus rhythm. We can select the waveform we want to simulate on the left. And on the right, we can select frequency. And we can make sure that that is picked up properly by the monitor that we're testing. Again, we would refer to the service manual for the device to determine if the readings that it is showing is within tolerance and acceptable for its performance. The other waveforms that we have available for ECG simulation are sine wave at 10 hertz, 60 hertz, and 100 hertz. That allows us to test the filtering of the monitor or device we're testing. And then we have square wave at 0.125 hertz or 2 hertz. And then we have triangle at 2 hertz. And to get back to the main screen, we just press the back arrow. And that concludes all of the test modes for doing manual testing on the SA2600. In this video, we'll be demonstrating the SA2600 safety analyzer. We'll show how to select and configure the auto sequences, and also how to run the auto sequence and the view the test results at the end. To run an auto sequence on the SA2600, we press the auto sequences button from the main menu. Here we can select either custom or fixed sequences. If we select any of the pre-programmed fixed sequences, we can see that it'll tell me exactly what tests are going to be run, but I can't change any options. I can't go in here and modify anything. Uh, everything is pre-configured for me. I can run the test by pressing the right arrow or it can go back to auto sequences, pressing the left arrow. If I pick a custom sequence, then we can see that by pressing any of the fields on the screen, we can easily change the options by pressing on any of the buttons to enable or disable that specific test. We can change the limits just by pressing on the number and entering the values that we want to use. The measurement delay is meant for when we're turning on a device. That's the time that it's gonna to take to get past the startup screen, any welcome messages or anything like that on the device under test, so that we can make sure that it's uh, in a ready running state before we take any measurements. We can pick the AMI or IEC test roll-off filter. This is the high frequency filter for the safety analyzer. And then we can also select whether or not we want to repeat the testing with the device off. By default, we always test with it on first and then off in the second set. So if we don't want to repeat testing with the device off, we select no. And if we do want to repeat the testing, then we select yes. So now in order to start this test, I'll press the right arrow or I'll go back to the main screen. I'd like to show you another setting before we do that. We have an option over here for DUT line power. So some devices, when you apply line power to them, they turn on automatically. They have a rocker switch or some hardwired power switch. Other devices like this uh, monitor that we have here, when I apply line power to the monitor, it doesn't turn on. It's sitting in a standby mode, it's ready to go, but it doesn't turn on until I press a button. 
So for these types of devices, we need to select that it's a standby device. If the device turned on automatically with line power, I would select on. What that's going to do is when I'm running the test, the SA2600 is going to stop and it's going to alert me that I need to turn on my DUT by pressing the power button. And we, if we press on the question button, it explains all of this information right on the screen as well. So now I'm going to select that custom sequence that we just made and we're going to start that test. Now we can enter information about that device under test directly here on the screen by pressing any of these fields and typing in the information or we can just proceed to the test. The first step that it does is the resistance, ground resistance, and you'll notice that it turned my DUT off. And that's why it's really important to select the proper screen, uh, the setup mode for power on the previous screen, because I need to tell it whether or not I need to turn on the device under test manually. Now to zero the test leads, I'll connect my chassis cable to the earth ground on the receptacle, just like it has shown on the screen. Once that reading stabilizes, I'll press zero leads. And that will give me a zero reading for the cable and any internal resistance on the SA2600. Then I can reconnect to the device under test. The next screen tells me, go ahead and make my connections. I've got the patient leads connected. I've got the power plugged in and the chassis connected to the earth ground on the back of the device under test. Uh, every auto sequence will start with a line voltage test and then the earth resistance measurement. And here's the message telling me that I need to turn on the DUT. So, if I had selected on for the power type, it would just continue on with the testing, assuming that the device had turned on when I told it to, or when it applied power to the receptacle. So now I can manually turn on the device, and this is that startup delay. We can see the power up delay is running in the background. That gives the device under test a little bit of time to get past its startup screen, and it's in its normal run mode before we take a measurement. And now it's ready for the other test modes. It moved on to doing the earth leakage, the enclosure leakage. All of the measurements that I had selected in the auto sequence configuration screen are now being performed. As soon as it gets to a point where it's going to turn on power, turn power back onto the device, it will prompt me again to turn it on. So it applied power, hot and neutral are both closed. In this case, we have reverse polarity and it's telling me you need to turn on your device under test and then press continue. And that power delay is counting down again to get past the startup screen on my device under test. At any time I can press stop to cancel the test and stop where it, right where it's at. It'll show me all of the measurements that were taken. Um, we can have, we can see anything that is over the limit that we had set is in red. Anything that was not tested, because I stopped the test, show, also shows up in red and it says NT for not tested. Any of the options that were not enabled show up as gray and they'll say off for the measurement because that was turned off. At the top, we'll see set one, that's for when power was on, and data set two was with the power turned off, which we didn't get to because I stopped the test. And at this point, I could export this data to my BC Mobile. Or I can go back to the main screen to start another test. Hi, this is Lucio Simone, and in this video, we're going to demonstrate electrosurgery testing, both power and safety testing using the ESU 2400 and SA2600 with my BC Mobile. Here we have the Force FX generator that we're testing and the ESU 2400 that we're going to use to analyze the outputs. Now I've already got the cables already connected. We've done other videos for how to make the connections and which cables to use. So we're just going to get right into testing here.
Now the power for the Force FX is plugged into my SA2600. Because we're going to do safety testing later, we just made that connection now so that it's already ready to go. I have a foot switch simulator so that I can trigger the output of my generator. And I have a phone running my BC Mobile. Now this could either be a Apple or uh, Android device. In this case, we have a iPhone uh, that we're going to use. So the first thing I want to do on my BC Mobile is select the asset that I'm testing. We can do that either by selecting the drop-down list or we can use the barcode scanner. I just press on the barcode and then I scan the barcode on the device I'm testing and my BC Mobile is loaded with that asset information. Then I will go down to the bottom of the screen and select the test mode and I'm presented with which equipment I want to test with. So it's showing all of the Bluetooth devices that are in the area, at least that it knows of. So it can see one SA2600 and it can see one uh, Bluetooth, uh, USB Bluetooth adapter. Now I've got that plugged into the front of the ESU2400. I could also plug it into the side and it would work just the same. So since we're doing the function testing first, I'm going to press test using the Bluetooth module on the 2400. This confirms on the screen that I have the correct asset selected. If I didn't, I could go back and select the correct asset. Um, there's no data yet, so I'm going to go straight to test. And now I'm presented with uh, what options I want to test. Now that we've completed the function testing using the ESU2400, we've done power tests, we've done leakage, high frequency leakage test, and we've done the REM test. We verify that the function of the Force FX is all working properly. Now it's time to do the low frequency leakage using our safety analyzer. So here we've got the um, generator connected. All of the mains to applied parts are connected to all of my electrodes on the 2600. Now it really doesn't matter what sequence these are plugged into. Uh, there are labeling on the 2600 for ECG leads. None of these are ECG leads, so all we have to do is measure the leakage to each one of these. Um, we've got the MyBC Mobile connected to the SA2600 using Bluetooth. So we can see that the Bluetooth icon is on and it's ready to go. I still have the same asset selected in MyBC Mobile from when we did our power testing. So that's correct. I don't have anything to change there. And I'm going to run the test at the bottom of the screen. I select test. And now I pick which device I want to test with, the 2600. Once it connects, it's going to just make sure again, do we have the right asset? Yes, this is the correct asset. And I'm gonna run my test. So now I'm presented with a uh, screen that shows all of the testing functions that are available on my 2600. I can do auto sequences, manual testing, I can open and close the ground and polarity, all that stuff. But what I wanna do here is let's just run an auto sequence. So let's do the NFPA99 and we have applied parts. So we're going to run that test. Now below that auto sequence selection, we have the power mode and it's either on or standby. Well, that may be a little confusing. So to explain that, a device like the Force FX here, it has a rocker switch on it. And when that rocker switch is on, anytime line power is applied, this unit is on. So we consider that an on power mode. The standby power mode is for other devices like the FT10 that have a soft power key. I apply line power and it's just ready to be turned on. It's not on by default. I have to push that power button in order to turn it on. And those two options will change how the auto sequence functions as it runs. So right now we have a rocker switch. It's hard powered, so we're gonna say it's on. I'm gonna start the test. We start with line voltage and then earth resistance. Now if this was over the limit, it would wait here and make sure that uh, the resistance was valid before continuing on with the test. But we were under the limit, so we were okay. Now it's gonna say turn on the DUT and press continue. 
Now, as soon as I turn on the DUT, it was already on uh, for our testing. It has to go through a power up mode. So that time delay that was on the 2600 gives the device under test a chance to go through its startup mode or uh, initialization sequence so that it's, it's idle before we continue on with the test. Now it's going to say turn off the DUT, so we'll turn it off. We're going to repeat the test with the device turned off and make sure that it's safe in all conditions, whether the device is on or off. Once the test is complete, it shows the summary result on the screen of my BC Mobile as well as the 2600. I press save at the bottom of the screen and now that saves my record to the database. I can go back to the home screen and I can look at that test record here. Here's my safety analyzer test that I just ran. I can see the details of that test or I can send that test to an email or a text message and have that information available for uploading to a CMMS system or storing to my um, asset management. Now, if I want to send multiple tests, I just have to press and hold on one of them and then I can check any of the tests that I want to send. I can send multiple at a time and I say send test results. Now all five of those tests will be sent at once. Great. Thanks, Lucia. We've got a few questions that have come in. Um, the first one is, uh, you mentioned a setting called power mode. Can you explain that a little more, please? Yeah, so that's used to uh, determine, you know, what type of device you're testing, whether um, it has a hard power switch and, and it turns on automatically uh, when line power is applied, or if it's got a soft key, and you have to um, press that key manually in order to turn on the DUT. Um, the safety analyzer is going to automatically go through its test, and uh, you know some some of the tests have to be done with the device on and some with the device off. So uh, we need to make sure that that setting is correct so that the test is run properly. Okay, so. When running an auto sequence without the My BC Mobile app, how do I retrieve my results? So in that case, um, we can export the results with the USB cable uh, on the side of the unit and uh, get your results through the computer. Okay, so how is the SA2600 different from my other BC group safety analyzers then? Uh, there's uh, a new feature uh, in this one. So the uh, the other safety analyzers have uh, a ground, when they measure ground resistance, they use 10 milliamps to uh, measure the output, uh, the ground resistance. On this one, uh, we've increased that to 200 milliamps, uh, which makes it compatible with the IEC uh, 62353 standard. Okay, another couple of questions here. Oh. Why do your electrical safety testers always default to hot in the off position? Default to hot. Oh, uh, so basically when you uh, plug in the safety analyzer into line power, you plug in the power cord, um, you don't always necessarily know what's being plugged into that unit. So defaulting to that receptacle being off, it's just kind of a, a fail safe uh defaults to a a uh, device not being powered uh condition so that you have to take action to turn it on to make sure that you're ready you know if you've got your unit open and you're troubleshooting or whatever um you may not necessarily want that thing to turn on until you're ready another question here is um the SA2600 allows to activate two SFC 
if this is not allowed or indicated by the standard, or is it? I'm not sure I understand the question. That's how it's written, unfortunately. <laughs> um, S F two C. Yeah, two S F C. Interesting. Um, I, we're going to have to follow up on that one because I, like I said, I'm, I'm not sure I understand the question. Maybe we can uh, do that by email later. Okay, no problem. Um, another question here is how, how do we get the mobile app? Oh, uh, that's available on the um, uh, Google Play Store or the Apple uh, Store as well. Okay, and is there and, a cost to that? <laughs> Uh, no, there's not. It's a free. Uh, and, yeah, it's free. Uh, and there's also uh, QR codes on uh, the BC Group Store uh, page uh, for that as well. Okay, that's great. So um, if anybody wants to get in contact with you, Lucia, which is the best kind of contact? Email, email works best. Um, that should be in here somewhere, right? Uh, so um, El Simone at uh, BC Group intl.com. That's perfect. Okay, we don't appear to have any more questions, so we'll kind of wrap up now. So thank you, Lucio, for your time and for a great informative presentation. Um, I'd like to encourage everyone to visit today's sponsor to learn more about the products they provide to the industry. So please visit bcgroupstore.com. Um, as promised, the answer to today's trivia question is Mark Twain. So congratulations to our winner, Josh Moffitt. Enjoy your t-shirt, Josh. A quick reminder, you can obtain your CE certificate by completing the post-webinar survey, which will be emailed one hour after the completion of today's webinar. You must complete the survey to receive your 1CE credit from the ACI, and you'll be able to download the certificate directly from your computer once the survey is submitted. Um, if you have any questions, you can reach us at webinar at mdpublishing.com. We'll be back next week with another webinar, so please visit webinarwednesday.live for more details and, of course, complimentary registration. So thank you once again for your time today. Um, enjoy the rest of your day, and we will see you next time.